So we've got the feds who have indicated they've dropped the rate. Uh, we've had a few uh, questions about that. Uh, sales year over year are per near 60% over more sales year over year. And they're talking about a little bit of inflation. Uh, we're going to go over all of that today. We're going to talk about how that's going to affect real estate, what we expect to come out of uh, this year and the next year. Plus, I'm going to uh, I'm going to address a question by four different folks that I had a conversation with. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, it's funny. It was Tim and Tom, and uh, then it was uh, Raul and uh, Roshita. Uh, happy birthday! Just want to look, just a shout out. Roshita, happy birthday today. Uh, anyway, so we've had a lot of different questions. So we're going to go over this today. We're going to look at how it affects real estate, what you should expect. Again, looking year over year, kind of forecasting next year what we expect to happen. Okay. So we're going to go into that. Make sure you subscribe, uh, hit the like channel, let us know what you think. More importantly, make sure that you share the link. If you know of somebody that is looking at wanting to buy or sell, uh, whether now or within the next 12 months, really you should be sharing this with them so that we can go over or they can see all of the real-time numbers. So again, you know, like today, I was reading, you know, a couple of different uh, publications, and, you know, they're talking about what happened, you know, between January and March, which is, well, that's great, but it is the middle of May. <laughs> And so having something that's a little more relevant, uh, that is also free, uh, and I don't ask for money, uh, is got to be worth listening to. Besides, I must be fun to listen to because I enjoy myself, because uh, if anybody watches as I get ready for my show and whatnot, uh, I, I think they would think I was crazy. But anyway, I, I have a good time. I guess I'm my best entertainer. So there we go. All right, so let's get on to some numbers here. So the Fed's dropped some rates. Okay, to be clear, all right, to be very clear, the Feds have nothing to do with mortgage rates. And that is super important to understand. Remember, when the Feds talk about rates, they're talking about your HELOCs, which is, you know, your home equity line of credit, HELOCs, okay? It affects those. Your credit cards, it will affect those. Commercial lending, it will affect those. Car loans it will affect those. So any type of commercial type of uh, interest rate, it has that effect. However, when we talk about mortgage rates, you need to take a look at the 10-year treasury, the mortgage-backed securities. Look at your bond rates. And those are the metrics that dictate what mortgage, residential mortgage interest rates, residential being four units or less, right? Single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex, four units or less. That is what indicates what mortgage rates are gonna be. Feds have nothing to do with it. Uh, that was one of the questions that came out today. They said, George, this is awesome, dude. The feds, they dropped the rate, Woohoo!" And I'm like, you know, hang on, time out. You understand it has nothing to do with mortgage interest rates. In fact, many times, shockingly enough, when the feds drop the rates, mortgage interest rates actually go up. And I mean, we're not talking like off the chart, but you know, boop, they'll bump up a little bit. So keep that in mind. The two have uh, very little relationship to, to each other, okay? So I wanna talk, you know, just wanna make that clear as we kind of move forward here. So when we take a look at our market month over month, okay, so our inventory month over month is up. and down here, when we talk about, see my beautiful little asterisk there? That's about as artistic as I get. But anyway, 1,892. This is one of the largest increases for the last seven days of homes coming on market. It's one of the largest ones that we've seen. They've been really bouncing around, you know, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600. Boop, we had a pretty, pretty significant bump. And that's why we're seeing 47.4. Uh, new on market, month over month, is 18.5% uh, over what it was in April. Well, okay, it's a spring market. That's a given. I would totally expect that. The buyers out there in the world are going, finally! <laughs> Here's the thing, though. We are 22.2% .2 
intended sales higher than what we were year over year. And at, okay, so year over year for the month, okay? So if I take a look at the month to date, so May 1 through May 14th, today's the 15th, so I can't include that because it's not done yet. So May 1 to May 14th of 2020 versus May 1 to May 14th in 2021, we are up on our pended 34.8% and basically 60%, 59.2% more than we were the same time period a year ago. And remember, a year ago, we were really starting to kick it in high gear and our inventory was super dropping down. When we're already 60%. So that momentum that happened in, two, in uh, 2020 has continued. It, it, it has not slowed down. It is, it is that Formula One racer going <laughs> down the road. All right, uh, solds. Uh, when we look at it, month over month is, is up 6%. Okay, that's perfect. So when we look at it year over year, okay, here we go. Uh, our inventory is actually down year over year. And so the difference is, okay, let me see if I get this right. So the difference is we have like 5,000 and change homes available today, single family, and we look at single family homes. Uh, a year ago, we had 9,040. So really we're, you know, we're at half, just, just shy of half, which is pretty, pretty frightening, all things considered. However, we are up 14.7% year over year. Part of that, again, is right here. When we look at pended, we're up 24%. And then, of course, we're up 26.5% sold year over year. So we're already selling, you know, 26% more homes than what we did in, in a crazy market. And that is going to continue. That will continue over the next 12 to 18 months. And we're going to go over that. We're going to talk about some metrics, and we're going to continue kind of that thought process, a continuation of last week. If you didn't see last week's, I'll have Marie and May post that for you so that you have last week's to compare to, and maybe in the, week, the week before that, because then you can see the trend and, and how things are staying consistent. Since our accuracy since 2007 has been 90, 98%, I think it's 98% accuracy so far. All right, so uh, let's come down, let's take a look at the last seven days. So 1,892 homes came on market, 1,984 pended, and 1,535 actually closed. The key numbers here, right here, we are still seeing more going off market and there is still a massive pent up demand. The buyers are still out there. Yes, interest rates have been bobbling around a little bit. Uh, you know, I was just chatting with uh, a client yesterday and he's like, oh my gosh, you know, I locked in and well, rates went down a little bit. Well, depending on the lender and depending if the, you know, the, what they're trying to, uh, you know, entice you with has a rebate or is that actual par pricing, but more importantly, just like the stock market, rates go up and down every day. Today you can make money. <laughs> Tomorrow you can lose money. Tomorrow you can, you know, the day after you can make money again. It all, it all depends. Hey, listen, uh, if you're thinking, you know, oh gosh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride this out. I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna float and wait. Uh, I think that's pretty scary. There's a lot of volatile things that are going on in the market right now. There are reasons to, to for interest rates to come down. Uh, there are also reasons for interest rates to go up. And, you know, you can, you can see, you know, quarter point, half point swings in one day. You know, there was one point where, and there was a video. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll see if Marie can find that video where we saw, you know, a point, point and a half swing in one day. It was up, it was down, it was up, it was down. It was crazy. No, I don't expect to see that again. Uh, I hope ever. Uh, that was the wildest week uh, I think uh, any lender has ever experienced. It was the craziest in my more than 27 years of practice. Uh, I remember Linda Bagley, one of the uh, greatest, uh, she's an awesome agent, a uh, very dear friend of mine. She does a lot of uh, 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 liveaboard boats and whatnot. So if you're looking for a liveaboard boat, want to live out on Lake Union, really want true waterfront property, you need to give Linda Bagley a call. Anyway, uh, when we talk about craziness of interest rates. Look, they change every single day, uh, morning, afternoon. That's why if you get a price quote, you need to make sure that it's at the, the same time 
and you need to make sure that there's no rebates, that you're getting par pricing. Because, you know, like, like uh, the advertisement I got today, hey, they're like, hey, you know, we can offer you a rate 30 year fixed at 2.6. Okay, well, that was like a couple of months ago. And then you take a look at it and say, oh, that's going to cost you a point to get down there. Okay. Uh, when you translate that out, you know, that's, you know, five, ten, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. It's based on loan balance. Okay. That's a, that, that ends up being a big dollar, and that can be three, four years before you get that paid back. You know, the cost, that, that cost to buy down the rate, to get that better rate, okay, that can be three to four years, and, and depending if you're going to be in the home that long. Just all depends, right? Because today's dollar has more value than tomorrow's dollar, which is part of inflation. We're going to go over that in a little bit. All right, so when we take a look at financing, since we're kind of headed off into that, Par pricing today is 3.125, okay? However, if you're gonna stay in your home for less than eight years, especially if you're gonna stay in there for less than seven, six, five, four years, you should do a seven one arm, that par pricing is 2.25. That's a big deal, okay? If you're not gonna be there that long, well, don't pay 30 year money, okay? That doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, in seven years, I have to pay off the balance. It just starts to adjust. It becomes an adjustable rate mortgage. That's what an ARM is, adjustable rate mortgage. All right. Yes, there are caps to those, both annually and lifetime. Non-owner occupied, 3.875, or you can get 3.5 with one point. Okay. We've been doing a number of different investment properties for folks. Uh, actually, paying that point makes a lot of sense if you're going to keep the property for 10 years. Makes a lot of sense, because I think the repayment on that was three and a half years. I'd have to double check, but I'm thinking it was close to that. So when we take a look at the numbers here, we take a look at what's going on in the market. April reporting numbers came out actually pretty good. And they're, they've got, I mean, so there's pros and cons, okay? So let's be clear. So again, we just discussed that the feds have nothing to do with mortgage rates. But we also said that mortgage rates are, are like the stock market. And in fact, they are part of the stock market your bonds, your mortgage-backed securities, your 10-year treasuries, okay? When you look at those and we start evaluating what's gonna happen, that also means that the mortgage rates are subject to the volatility of the market, the economy, the, the perception of, of the investors, those are the big investors out there, and the people, okay? So if we consider the fact that we take a lot of volatility that means that the big investors are moving out of the stock market into safer investments. Their goal is to make a return because that's part of your 401k, that's part of your retirement, that's part of your, your stock if you're doing mutual funds and insurance and things like that. So these folks actually have to protect your money so they pull it out into safer territory, okay? If you're out in the ocean and the ocean's doing this, they're gonna pull you over where it's a little bit flatter. Why? Because there's more stability. When that happens, when they go to the safer investments, they're pulling into the mortgage-backed securities, they're pulling into the bonds, they're pulling into the treasury, because then that will actually increase the value of uh, you know, the, the mortgage-backed securities, the bonds and whatnot, and that means that the value of the bond goes up, interest rates come down. Now, as there's more stability in the market, okay, so we know that we've seen some crazy things going on, both nationally and internationally. But hey, we got some, we got some better news. Soon, we'll be able to not have to wear a face mask out in public to a degree, right? Okay, which is interesting in and of itself. Uh, since the last 18 months, we've been wearing masks. Uh, so we're going to be able to take the mask off. Now we're starting to see that, oh, okay, so now I'm going to be able to open it up to, hey, I can go on vacation. I can start to travel more. I can start to do things more. I can start going out to restaurants. I can start, oh my gosh, getting back to my normal life. Okay. Well, that's a positive thing. So that means that the stock market is going to see improvement. When the stock market starts seeing improvement, they pull out of bonds, they pull out of treasuries, they pull you know, out of mortgage-backed securities. Those rates drop, interest rates go up. In the same note, if we talk about uh, inflation because of, well, that just happens. We're talking about a little inflation. In fact, there was one comment that was put out there. I was, it actually caught my attention. I was really shocked to hear it. 
They said, hey, is uh, President Biden going to be the next uh, Jimmy Carter? And I thought to myself, oh, I hope not, because those interest rates had continued to escalate, and they can escalate it up into the 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Doing uh, seller financing became a big deal because interest rates just went through the roof. Okay. Now, all of you that are looking at 3% financing are going, wow, that's crazy. And I'm like, I know, but you know, that's what inflation does. You guys might remember the old history uh, book, you know, where the guy goes to get a loaf of bread and he's got a wheelbarrow full of money because money loses its value. The higher inflation, the less value there is in money and currency. So understand, inflation is bad, so they need to stifle that. How do they stifle that? They, they work on different things and slowing things down, and one of them sometimes is increasing interest rates. The uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, are scheduled or predicting, uh, and there are four different organizations that are predicting this, and including us about four weeks ago, that said next year you should anticipate mortgage rates being around 3.5% as a base, whereas right now they're about 3%, right? Because they bottle up and down from 3%, a little bit below, a little bit above, a little bit below, a little above, okay? Every day, every hour, they're, they're moving and shaking. You can follow them on the stock market, and you'll see, oh my gosh, he's right. There's a sticker. And it keeps going up and down. Yeah, and that adjusts mortgage rates. All right. So let's take a look at that. So if we know that we're looking at right now of appreciation in our area, anywhere is between 1.2 to 1.4% per month. That's our area right now. Uh, it's the same thing that we saw last year. Uh, we are seeing that again this year based on scarcity, based on the fact that we have limited inventory and rates are so low. But however, let's be ultra conservative. Let's say... We're going to take a $500,000 house, okay, it's just a medium price, okay, uh, well, medium price for outside of the east side in Seattle, since the medium price in those areas are, you know, well into the 800s. Uh, okay, so, but let's just take 500000 It's an easy number to work with. It's an easy number for people to kind of grasp around. All right, and we're going to cut our projected appreciation in half. We're going to use 7.7 percent appreciation, okay? Let's look at this. So let's talk about, and this is a question that Tim, Tom, and uh, two other folks had asked me about, and I thought really the best way to explain this, since I'm sure a few others have this same question, let's talk about it, but let's keep it on a simpler level. Again, I'm only gonna use 500,000 because it is a very simple round number for folks to work with. I am not going to include uh, mortgage insurance. This will be a 20% down. Uh, we are going to, again, keep this as simple as possible. We're not including taxes and insurance. We're only going to look at principal and interest, just the hard mortgage cost, principal and interest. No, I'm not going to include mortgage, you know, like uh, finance fees, closing costs. I'm not going to include that. Just the mortgage payment itself, just to bring clarity of projections of next year at this time versus today. And what does that translate to? and in a conservative way, okay? Conservative meaning that uh, it's gonna be higher than this. Just saying, all right. 500,000, if we use 7.7%, .7%, that takes us a future value of 538,500. Today, next year at this time, okay? This is 2022. <laughs> what is that, Space Odyssey 1999? Yeah, whatever that was, isn't that funny? All right, so today, if I use today's par pricing, uh, 3.125, right? 3.125 right there, okay? All right. The projection, Freddie and Fannie, is going to be at 3.5%, conservative number, okay? So your down payment using 20% is going to be $100,000 for today. It'll be $107,700 tomorrow. Mortgage balance will be 400 versus 430,800, okay? So we're already behind the eight ball right now. Already behind the eight ball, okay? Principal and interest, that makes that 1,713.50 versus 1,934.48, a difference of $221 a month. That's just right off the bat. Uh, conservative. We went with the full 14%. This number, as you know, would double, right? Just saying. Come down here, your annual increase would be 2,651.74 
or roughly $80,000 if uh, you were to expend that out through the entire uh, through the, the entire mortgage time. Now, yes, part of this becomes principal. Totally agree with that. But that doesn't negate the fact that you're still going to have to pay it. Yes, it's like adding to a savings account. Totally get that. Yes, your interest is diminishing. Totally get that. But again, in the beginning, since the average person only stays in a home 7 to 12 years, this is a number that becomes more real because the banks take their interest up front, right? They get paid more up front, and that's why you pay more towards principal as you get towards the end of a mortgage. Okay. When you look at this alone in a very conservative manner, you can already see why buying today is far more advantageous than tomorrow, hands down. Now, we had this conversation about, um, about three, four weeks ago, uh, you know, when one of the folks said, you know, why should I buy today? Or, no, I'm waiting to buy until the market comes back. Okay, so if I know conservatively that we're looking at 1.2 to 1.4% per month, but let's just use 7%, 7.7 because it's simple, right? Okay, so if I know that I'm looking at 7% this year, okay, and we know it's more than that, and then let's say in 2022, because again, uh, you know, based on the metrics, based on everything we're seeing, we're going to continue this path based on the fact that as long as we maintain uh, mortgage rates, growing economy, and housing supply, because our equity is still there, because that's what's going to give power to the market, okay, and maintain the health of the of the housing industry, okay. If I've got a then following year 7%, okay, that means that I am taking my, there we go, 538,000, I need to add 7% to that, okay? Well, that's going to be roughly another 42,000, $40,000, this rough number. So let's call that's now gonna be $580,000. So if I take that to $580,000, that's just two years. But let's say, let's say we see a 3% uh, reduction, which is a not uncommon, common uh, recession, you know, adjustment, price adjustment. Okay, well, if you're at 580,000, you take, you know, 3% off of that, uh, you know, you're only talking about, what, maybe $20,000? Okay, so now you're down to 560, you're still behind the eight ball. Buying today versus buying in a couple of years where there's the potential of a small recession that is gonna be short-lived. And actually, I don't even anticipate a recession. I anticipate our market starting to become more of a balance. And as we become more of a balance, meaning we, we have two weeks of inventory now, we go closer to the three, four, five months of, of inventory that is available for sale versus two weeks today, our appreciation will probably drop down to four to 7%. I figure this is in 2023. We're gonna start seeing that, but not necessarily a reduction because we're still seeing an appreciation. There are some folks are going to say, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Uh, no, we're getting more to a balanced market at that point. And when that happens, we know we're still going to continue to see some good value, some appreciation, good house health. Just saying. So if you have any questions about this, call me, text me, post it up in the corner. Uh, we do answer questions typically within about 30 minutes. If you have any questions about the metrics here, uh, feel free to give me a call. My folks at Trend Graphics, shout out to those guys again. Uh, we're in constant touch. These guys are awesome sauce, and uh, they really help us to be able to make this a very simple uh, pattern. Marie will post our uh, beautiful little charts for us. And uh, if you have any questions, please put it up there. Remember to subscribe and or at least hit like. Let us know what your questions are and share the link. In the meantime, Enjoy this absolutely May 15th. Man, it is beautiful outside. You guys be careful. Have a great day. And uh, I think we should have a mask tossing party. I think that's the end of June, June 30th, mask tossing party. I think that would be awesome. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.